<laughs> I like that Callan's going. Hey, I might move to Texas. Callan and I and uh, Sean have actually talked about this. Like if, Getting a ranch like, together? Well, if, if, if here's the thing. If California continues to be this restrictive, yeah. I don't know if this is a good place to live. First of all, it's extremely expensive. The yeah. taxes here are ridiculous. Yeah. And if they really say that we can't do stand-up until 2022 or some shit like that, uh-huh. like, I might jet. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Here's what he tweeted. He said, quote, frankly, this is the final straw. Tesla will now move its HQ and future programs to Texas, Nevada, where immediately, if we even retain the Fremont manufacturing activity at all, it will be dependent on how Tesla is treated in the future. Tesla is the last car maker left in CA, in California. John Doyle in. Heck off, Tommy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Commie. Feels good to be back. Feels good to be back here behind the desk. As some of you might know, I just got back from Texas, as indicated by my cowboy hat, which has not left my head in about a week now, except when I'm exercising, sleeping, or showering. But yeah, that was epic. Truly, truly a time and a half. Plus, I just shaved with a bad razor, so now I'm all cut up, which is epic. But it's okay. Nothing can get you down when you're wearing a cowboy hat. It is the antidote to misfortune. I'll tell you that much right now. And I've never been to Texas before, but it's much different than where I'm from and also other states that I've been to, and that along with the news cycle is kind of what inspired me to want to talk about this today. And this isn't really a new trend. People have long been moving from California to Texas, but there's been a spike recently of about 36%, which is pretty significant. So I figured that we'd talk about who's moving to Texas, why they're moving there, why moving to Texas is epic, why Texas is epic, and how to keep Texas epic uh, going forward, because as it would turn out, and as I've been saying on this channel since the very beginning, it is very possible that Texas could go blue by 2030. And when that happens... It's wraps. So we'll get into that. But I think that Joe Rogan was the first to come out and say that he's thinking about moving to Texas. And of course, people moving from California to Texas is not a new phenomenon. This has been going on for many years. Tens of thousands of people moving from California to Texas. But as we mentioned, it has increased in recent years and it could very well continue to increase because of California's general deterioration, but also specifically the way that they've been handling coronavirus. Like they won't let surfers go into the water. They're saying that Los Angeles can never be open until there's a cure for coronavirus. Uh, They're giving free drugs in hotel rooms to homeless people. I don't remember that particular provision of the social contract, but I'm just a dumb YouTube man, so I guess that makes sense. But you're all familiar with what they're doing. Many of you are actually living under it in California. I'm in Michigan, so I'm living under Comrade Whitmer, uh, who might be Joe Biden's VP pick. But that's why Joe Rogan was talking about moving. It's like he does stand up comedy. And if they won't let him use the comedy store for another two years, what's the point of even being there? That in addition to how terrible California is in general. And if you're from California, this isn't to disparage your state. It's truly magnificent. Like it's a thing of beauty. I love the concept of vacationing there, but the problem is that the dominant strain of your politics is cancerous and awful, which is unfortunately running off into the quality of your state. Remember when California was red in virtually every presidential election for like four decades from 1952 until 1992, except for when Lyndon Johnson won in a landslide? I remember that. More on that later, but in addition to the coronavirus response, California has the highest cost of living of any major state in the country. The only places higher like D.C. and Hawaii. They have the 11th highest taxes in the country. It's one of the most regulated states in the country. As of 2019, their code of restrictions contained hundreds of thousands of regulations across like every industry imaginable. This doesn't even begin to touch their gun laws. And it's also the 11th least friendly state in the country. And it's like, why does anyone even want to live there in the first place? As far as I can tell, it's because the weather is nice and the girls there are like illegally hot. But I own a poncho and women are annoying, so that's not all that compelling to me. But you compare this to Texas. They have like the 18th lowest cost of living in the country, also the 18th lowest taxes in the country, and that's also pretty heavily regulated, uh, but significantly less than California. California has like 395,000 restrictions. Texas has like 227,000. Still quite a lot, but the difference is that Texas has a relatively greater presence of industries that are typically heavily regulated, like things pertaining to the environment and health, etc. But they're also in the top 10 states for gun rights, and they're also ranked like number four for the friendliest states. Oh, well, but California has the best weather. Yeah, Texas has the third best weather. And guess what else? The girls are Catholic. We're all going to make it. No e-girls in Texas. I don't even, I don't want to hear. Well, well, John, if you look at the religious affiliation by state, the data actually show that I don't care. California breeds thottery. Texas breeds families. No slightly above average looking girl with a poor relationship with her father ever said that she's going to move to Texas to pursue being a thought full time. It's always California. I cannot be moved on this. But that's exactly why Elon Musk is talking about moving Tesla to Texas as well. Like California is not friendly to business, nor is it friendly to people, whereas Texas is, as we've discussed. Same thing with Dave Rubin from the Rubin 
Corbin report. He's talked about it. My friend Elijah Schaefer, aka slightly offensive, he intends on moving to Texas. And it's because people are tired of it. The house of cards is collapsing. California is deteriorating and people are leaving. Texas is basically just what I'd imagine California used to be like. And that's actually a pretty chilling prophecy because it implies that Texas could go the way of California. And what do we do then? Like, Texas is like the Second Amendment of states because it's like, well, if all else fails, I'll just move to Texas. Well, like, what happens if Texas follows California? The two states are pretty similar in a lot of ways. Like, for example, demographics in California and Texas are pretty similar. But Texas has a much lower poverty rate for all demographics uh, than does California because the system in Texas doesn't create obstacles for success, nor does it punish success. And that's fantastic. But the question becomes, can we sustain that environment? Because on the one hand, we can look at it and say, wow, people are leaving California. They're moving to Texas. They're waking up. The liberal experiment has failed. USA. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, now they're coming to Texas and they're voting for the same policies that ruined their home state. And this is happening for a few reasons. Firstly, it's because you've got people who can't afford to live in places like California or even New York. And so they're forced to move to a place like Texas with a substantially lower cost of living. But it's not like that's going to force their values to shift. They just say, well, it's capitalism's fault. There weren't enough price controls on housing. And then in addition to that, you've got the same case for families who can't afford to raise children in these areas, or perhaps they don't even want to because they tend to be pretty toxic. And so they're relocating. And then on top of that, you've got immigrants coming in to Texas who primarily vote for Democrats. And you can read about this in any major publication. LA Times writes about this. Politico writes about this. Uh, this is not some theory, some fringe theory, like within the realm of what is referred to as political science is just true and completely uncontroversial. I'm sick of people walking on eggshells when discussing this topic. The Democrats discuss it quite often. In fact, they celebrate it because it's their strategy. It's their ace in the hole, weaponized immigration. The Democrats mock Republicans by saying, well, you can't get minorities to vote for you, to which the obvious reply would be, you couldn't even get Americans to vote for you. So you had to start importing voters. And that would be fine if we were bringing in immigrants who love America. They love our history. They love our constitution. And while many of them do. Unfortunately, they largely don't because they don't have to. And that's because Democrats have declared it offensive to ask non-Americans to assimilate to American culture. They ask, well, what even is American culture? Great question. How about we start with the Constitution? Let's just start with the Constitution before we even get into picket fences and apple pies because the Democrats don't even agree with us on the Constitution anymore. Constitution isn't a radical partisan document. It was debated. It became the agreed upon framework. That's our frame of reference. We can debate everything else, but the Constitution is not up for debate. That's the whole point. And that's why liberalism doesn't work. The philosophy of liberalism seeks to liberate the individual from any and all constraints. And when taken to its logical conclusion, that means to have a shared culture or language or religion or idea of what gender is or set of values. Well, that would be wrong and offensive. And that's where we're at right now. And that begs the question of if we can't have anything in common, What's the, what are we doing here? What's the point? Are we just, we just holding hands? Like if the only thing that we have in common is that we all agree that we should have nothing in common, if that's what makes us a country, then we will not make it to 2100. It's like if your parents are arguing about what kind of carpet to get, and then you chime in with your opinion, and it's like, hey, it's great that you have an opinion, but you just got here and it's not your house. Or maybe dad wants to get a new couch and mom wants to collapse the foundations of the house just to see what the hell happens. And dad is like, honey, please don't do that. So then mom is like, hey kids, you can have a say in this too. And remember, if mommy gets her way, I'm gonna give you free candy out of dad's paycheck. And then dad's like, hey mom, that's not fair. And she's like, yeah, I don't care. That's literally the situation that we're in right now. And we're not playing horse. We're, we're not playing like tic-tac-toe, right? Like where if we lose, it's okay. It's not exactly consequential. No, this is, if we lose, they criminalize our speech and they try to take our guns away and they continue to destroy the prospects of the American family by sending jobs overseas while simultaneously regulating small business into the ground and taxing whatever's left so that they can try to finance social services for illegal aliens. And if that can't pick up the tab, no worries. They don't mind making your children and your grandchildren into debt slaves. And that's really what's at stake here with like this whole whole thing. The question of American politics in this decade is the question of, do you want your children to have a better life than you did? Do you want your children to have more opportunities than you did? And are you willing to make sacrifices in order to achieve that? Or are you more comfortable watching superhero movies, eating fast food every day, and lusting after women on the internet than to be proactive in combating the threat that this country faces? Because we still have a window. And I would like to say that it's about the size of 12 years. Like, consider the fact that throughout history, nations have risen and they have fallen, and consider that those people in those nations probably viewed their status as the natural state of the world. And maybe you're rolling your eyes at this, you think this is just politics as usual, you think that both sides are equally bad. That's fine, I'm not asking you to listen to me, all I'm asking you to do is just remember that you heard this before it happened. 
not just from me. Many other people in conservative media have been talking about this. And if you listened, that would be great. But at the very least, just remember that you were told about it so that one of us gets to say, I told you so. But the difference is that your I told you so means that I've lost some credibility and my I told you so means that we've lost our country. Howdy there, folks. Stay this much right now. If you want to do me a favor, leave a thumbs up on the video. Maybe leave a comment with your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to share the video with a partner or two of yours, and maybe even uh, turn on notifications because this air YouTube, they don't like me too much. I don't take too kindly to folks speaking out against the narrative. But uh, we don't have that problem in Texas. We can just talk as we Not even an issue. You know what I mean? I tell you that much right now. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again. And may God bless America. Poof.